And now, what we all have been waiting for has finally arrived, the peak of the ceremony. It is time for our eloquent and fluent speakers. The start will be with Sultan Ashur, Muhammad bin Idris Secondary School, and his topic is video games. Please welcome him with me. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Sultan Ashur. I am from Muhammad bin Idris Secondary School, North Office. And today, I'm going to talk about video games and the benefits for us and for our kids. Let's start with this question. What is a game? Well, one of my favorite ways of defining game comes from the computer game designer, Chris Crawford. Let's begin with books. Books are great. They are really fun. They are entertaining, but they are not games. TV shows and movies are also not games because fundamentally they aren't interactive. But as soon as something is both fun and interactive, well, now we've got ourselves a plaything. And there are two types of plaything, according to Crawford. If you can play with the object and it's fun, but there's no goal or objective associated with it, then it's a toy. If, however, there is an objective, something you are supposed to accomplish, well, now you are talking about a challenge. But there are two different types of challenges. If the challenge involves no other people or other agents, it's just you. For instance, playing alone with a Rubik's cube, then you are talking about a puzzle. If, however, there are other people involved, well, now we've got ourselves a conflict. In a conflict, like a foot race, you aren't allowed to interact with other players. This is what Crawford calls a competition. If, however, you are allowed to interact with and interfere with other participants and they can do the same to you. Well, in that case, you are talking about a full-fledged game. But what is a video game, you ask? Well, a video game is a game played by electronically manipulating images produced by a computer program on a television screen or other display screen. And now that we know what a video game is, let's move on. Video games provide a fun escape from reality, though they are often portrayed as lazy, violent, and a waste of time by some. The debate has raged on for years. So, are there any positive effects? Can video games actually make you smarter? Well, before we get ahead of ourselves, it's important to know that too much of anything is bad for you. Even broccoli, seriously, extremely high doses of broccoli can be toxic. Even water toxicity exists. So if you binge and do nothing but play video games, the risks will probably outweigh any benefits. Having said that, many studies have actually shown increases in cognitive function after playing video game. One study in particular had the participants play the game Super Mario 64 for 30 minutes a day over two months. The brains of these participants saw an increase of gray matter in areas associated with memory, strategic planning, and fine motor skills of the hand compared to those who had not played. These are particularly encouraging results for mental disorders which cause some brain regions to shrink using video games as a therapy. This may even help kids who suffer from dyslexia to read more effectively. In a small study, dyslexic children who played regular video games ended up reading faster and more accurately, once again relating to improved attention skills. Surprisingly, action games can also increase attention to details of individuals. <clears throat> okay, now let's take a look at the following words on screen and yell out what color the word is as fast as we can. As an example, we have three words, green, blue, and orange. So I need to say what color the word is, not the word itself. Okay, I need to, everyone now to try without me. As we continue, it becomes more difficult because there's a conflict between the word itself and its color. 
chances are, if you play more than 5 to 10 hours of action games a week, you are able to solve these problems much more quickly. This is because your brain is actually more efficient in the areas associated with attention. This is because your brain is actually more efficient in the regions associated with attention. Of course, video games can also be incredibly educational. And while you may not be playing some of your favorite games for this purpose, there are certainly many, many games that are used as an effective teaching tool for both young and old. As an example, we have the game Minecraft. Minecraft is a game that has players interacting with the game world by placing and breaking various types of blocks in a three-dimensional environment. In this environment, players can build creative structures, creations, and artwork on multiplayer servers and single-player worlds across multiple game modes. And here are some of the stuff that 9 to 17-year-old children can build after playing the game Minecraft for three months. A building inspired by the Malaysian Twin Tower. A huge castle and a functional PC. So imagine your son building a PC inside a video game. Building a PC in real life would be a piece of cake for him. Meanwhile, other studies have found improvement in eyesight. Not only can they see smaller details more clearly, like tiny writing, but they have an easier time differentiating levels of gray. And it turned out that the average person can track of three to four objects at once. A practiced action gamer can track around six to seven. Finally, as technology continues to transform medicine, surgeries are being completed with the insertion of cameras and remote control tools. And these surgeries have very clear parallels to video game, like using a monitor and a controller device. Not surprisingly, young doctors with previous exposure to video games, like me in the future, <laughs> have shown fewer errors and faster completion than those with that. That means more video games equal less errors. And before we wrap up, let me point out the important stuff that I said today. One, video games have positive effects. Two, video games can improve eyesight instead of ruining it. Three, some mental disorders can be treated with video games. And four, reading books aren't the only way for us to be more creative. Of course, all of these skills are only useful if you use them, which you can't if all you do is play video game. As I said before, too much of anything can be bad for you. So enjoy your downtime and relax with your games in moderation. But get out there and keep your life diverse as well, because that's how you win at the game of life. It's been Sultan Ashur with you. Thank you for listening.